We had, a, uh, we had a 6.30 opening of the meeting. We had an executive session, and now we're back to the regular meeting in open session. First item on the agenda is public comments. Hearing none, next item is approval of minutes, September 19th, 2018, regular session. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Our next is September 26, 2018, regular session. So mm -hmm. moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay, next item is review and vote to approve warrants. Uh, I move to approve the warrants as printed in the agenda. Second. have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we have a public hearing, but we'll jump down. Oh, the pen's drawn. Did you? Yeah. Oh. Um, uh, next, uh, we can go right down to new business. Recognize the acceptance of $775 in uh, personal donations from individuals and businesses in the community from April 2019 to June 2018 to the Council on Aging and to approve the expenditure of these funds for general purposes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, yeah, we can do this next one. Consider amending the membership number for the Economic Development Task Force. Mr. Hadley, do you have something? To I ask to put this on because uh, we've had trouble getting a quorum, so I'd like to reduce it to uh, five members and so we can have a quorum of three. So what will be the break breakup of the committee after that, Anita, do you know? Because wasn't it residents and? We have one planning board. One planning board. One. Uh, I can go on the website. One select one. Selectman uh, ex officio or something? No, but is the select, I think we changed, well, one selectman, one planning, planning board. board, and then the rest are just? Community, or citizen. Right. So we had, did we have seven at first? We had seven, because uh, Marianne resigned. So do we want to bring it down to one five or two? Five, so we can have three as a quorum. How many are on the board? I don't know, I'm just wondering, do we have more than five members now? We have. Myself, myself, um, Mark Freeman, Bill Chase, and um, Barbara White. Five so members. Yeah. No, that one. Nobody else, right? That's it. Oh, you know, there's a planning board. Um, yeah, there's a planning board member. Uh, uh, Mark is not a planning no, board. No, it's Sarah um, Miles. The new Sarah Miles. Yeah. So you have Sarah Miles, Christopher, uh, Chris, uh, Bill Chase, you. Man. So right now it looks like we have Sarah Planning Board member, we have Board of Selectment member, we have Bill Chase, we have John Hadley, it still says Mary Ann, which she's no longer, we have Barbara Wyatt and Mark, one, two, three, four, five, six. Barbara Wyatt says uh, April of 18. Yeah, the, the, the website's, um, yeah, the head needs to be updated, but we have one, Two, three, four, five. So we have six members. I think now. he's uh, easiest way to make Billy a uh, associate member, and then um, so we have five members because we can't. Uh, then that way we can have a quorum. There's no provision for an associate member currently within the structure. That. Okay. You're having a problem getting a quorum. Right. Are, are there members that never show up? They need to no longer be I think members. We need to look look at that. Um, so yeah, do maybe, we need to make it what? Uh, maybe we can look at members that. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring it to the next. Want to want to put it off till the next we'll meeting, and then we'll we'll talk to the members I'll, that I'll are currently the members, on the committee yeah. Yeah. and see. Yeah. Is it Mark is a planning board representative? No, or? Mark is a resident. Oh, that's correct. Mark's a resident. Sarah is the planning board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah, why don't we talk oh. about re, so we'll put that on the next agenda. Yeah. October 17th meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll talk to uh, two of the members, if I know. Well, we can even see if those two want to, right. they're one and the right. same, maybe he can just do the planning board. Yeah, that's what I do. Um, yeah. Okay, so we'll pass over that, and it's uh, five past, so we have a public hearing, if somebody wants to read the public hearing notice. 
Public notice is hereby given in conformity with the requirement of general bylaw of the town of West Boyles and Article 23, uh, the public hearing and the notice that the Board of Selectmen will meet on Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018 at 7.05 p.m. For the, for the purpose of considering amending the amending to a number of the policies contained in Section F of the Board of Selectmen's policy book. Okay. Those policies include policy F4, investment policy, policy F5, new growth taxation revenue policy, policy F6, policy on fraud prevention and deduction to the to be replaced by anti-fraud policy, policy 7, fund balance policy to be replaced by financial reserve policy, and policy 8, cash receipt, cash disbursement, petty cash, uh, tailing and reconciliation of the cash policies and procedures to be replaced by revenue turnover policy, the reconciliation policy, the disturbance policy, disbursement policy, and a new tailings policy. The meeting will be held in Selectman's meeting room of the town hall located 140 Wooster Street, West Boylston. For additional information or to review the proposed information, please contact the Office of the Board of Selectmen, Town Administrators. All interested persons and groups and agencies are invited to attend. Them. Okay, um, Anita, do you want to? Okay, thank you. Um, as the board is aware, um, you were provided a copy of the draft policies, I believe two meetings ago. And um, I've been working with the members of my finance team, which include Leslie Gerton, our town accountant, Bonnie Yasek, our treasurer collector, and Diane Peterson, um, who is our regional assessor. Uh, we were looking at these financial policies because we were concerned that when the municipal modernization bill included a number of finance related changes to state law, we wanted to make sure that our financial policies um, reflected those necessary changes, but also reflected the current um, procedures that the town is using. So we started looking through the existing policies that Raj just uh, mentioned, and we um, were fortunate enough to um, receive copies of financial policies from other communities, several of which had been developed uh, um, for those communities through consultants and through the use of DOR assistance through the Community Contact Best Practices Program. So when we found those draft policies, we started using those as a basis to amend or replace the policies that um, we needed. The the, as, as Raj mentioned, the policies that we have, um, F1, F2, F3, and F9, will stay as is. There are no modifications to those. But the other policies have either been amended or they're being replaced in entirety. And the reason for that is so that we can be assured that they do reflect current practices and reflect the changes to law. So the new policies that we're asking you to consider and vote on tonight are the anti-fraud policy, capital planning, debt management, financial reserves, forecasting, investments, new growth, OPEB, overlay, revenue turnover, tailings, and tax enforcement. Um, in the process of going through these drafts, we did send the drafts to the Finance Committee to seek their um, feedback on draft policies. And the Finance Committee did look through the policies, but they chose to comment and provide edits on four of them and those were capital planning, debt management, financial reserves, and OPEP. The others, they felt that it, they just, it wasn't appropriate for them to be commenting on them. Um, when uh, at our, when I gave you the draft set of policies, um, since then we had been working with Selectman Pat Crowley on the documents um, and providing, um, working with him to um, get his necessary suggestions and edits, and those have all been incorporated as well as the Finance Committee documents. So what we have in front of us tonight, um, excuse me, are a comprehensive set of uh, new policies that we would like the board to approve to add to our list of financial policies um, with the understanding that these would be uh, renumbered along with the existing policies so that the policies would go in name of alphabetical order. Um, and would be renumbered accordingly. 
Um, I think that's it in terms of the discussion on process. Leslie, did I forget anything? I believe so. Okay. If I may. Yeah. Um, I went, as Anita said, uh, I went through all of these uh, with a fine tooth comb. For the past couple of days, we went back and forth. Um, uh, I made a bunch of changes that were mostly typographical, a few minor changes, uh, nothing really substantive. Um, I think the policies in total are very well written. They reflect best practices uh, that accountants and finance people should be following. Uh, they protect the town uh, from theft and they. Uh, set the town up to be doing the right things financially as the town has a pretty good reputation based on our bond rating uh, and you know we don't have many budget issues so I recommend that the board accept these policies as written. Anybody else have any comments? Mr. Crowley's fine with it, I'm fine with it. I'm gonna get to blame him if there's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody from the public have any comments on it? So we need a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And now we would need a motion to accept the changes. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank um, Leslie Gerton, Diane, um, Diane Peterson, and Bonnie Yasek in doing a lot of the work associated with all this. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Uh, next item is consider approving proposed sign for the Department of Public Works. Show you what it is. It's pretty much the same sign we have out front here, and it's I think pretty much the same sign we're going to have at the senior center. So it just goes in line with what we have right now. We have no sign right now. No one knows we're there. So we just thought we put a sign out there. We took the guide rail out of the front. We moved and see that little island. So we have a nice little grass island out front now, with no ice or guide rail there. And we thought we put a sign out there so people know where we are. And this is the. Uh, that price is probably three or four hundred dollars higher than what it would be because we'll install it ourselves. And I also went to Mass Corps. I went to a uh, trade show last week and I gave this to Mass Corps. So they're going to give me a price. So hopefully I can get it even cheaper. So, but I just wanted you to see the design and see if you like the design. Is it double sided? This one is, yeah. It will be. Okay. So, so it'll be perpendicular to the roadway. Right. So in either direction coming up 12, you'll see it. I like the idea of having them all the town signs yeah. look alike. I think that's a good idea. The only modification I'm, I think I'm going to put the 35 Worcester Street on there too. So yeah, yeah, that would be good. I think that's a good idea. Do you really want people to know where you are? <laughs> <laughs> that's the other. Thing. You notice there's no phone number. I was. I noticed that. <laughs> but I, I mean, I. If there's no open sign. Up, the open sign is closed. <laughs> um, if you do get a less price because. This was the first one that you went with. Are you going to go back to them? Uh, probably because it only to be fair. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they've been good with us right. in the past. So that's it. I just wanted you to see. Did I don't you, know anything to vote on. But when you got this, when you got this price, did you call other? Did you call no, other companies? Yet. But I, like I said, right after I got this, I went to Mass Corps because I was going to the trade show and I met I met some of the people. Okay. I gave them the sheet and they haven't got back to me yet. But I think they'd probably be the cheapest out yeah. of anybody. If they, but they may not be able to do it. But I could throw this out to Sunshine Sign, and there's another one out in, um, I think, Grafton, another sign company that I'm familiar with. Right. See what they could do. So do we need a, I guess it says consider approving proposed sign. So we need a motion to approve. This looks like the, this looks like as here. Mm -hmm. This looks like the one outside. It's identical. Yeah. yeah. Do you want a motion? Then well, you have a money amount. Up to that month? Oh, actually, I was, I was just looking for the design. If, if you guys like the oh. design, it'll come out of my budget. There's no extra money. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice if we put this together with the whole new paving of the parking lot. That now we're going to have a beautiful sign, you a nice green <laughs> area in that yeah, no, that I'm, parking lot. The but parking is on the capital plan for FY20. So, so this isn't, so this can, 20. the parking lot can be fixed around oh, what yeah. you're doing here. I probably won't even put this up till spring just because it's right on 12. 
and the state plows are going to be going by there. And I, and I, in fact, I'm, I'm entertaining a thought of, of removing it in the winter because it's so close to 12 and they go by so fast and I don't want it to get destroyed. But it depends on what kind of sign I get. If I, I get a good sturdy des one. Design it so it stays up. So yeah. If it has to go in, I don't know, a little deeper in or I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I'm a little nervous about where it's going to be, but it'll look nice. How far off the road actually is it? It's, there's only an eight foot island there, so it's, you got like a four foot shoulder in the beginning of the island and it'll be right in that eight foot island, so it's probably only five feet off the road. Is the island going to have a berm around it? It has a berm around the front now. We're going to finish the back. Yeah, yeah so that, that means they're cutting up the berm and everything if they hit the well, sign. Well, right. No, I, I don't worry about hitting the sign. It's more the snow, the, snow the heavy snow. Yeah. Well, but yeah, we have to, well, we have to it, design it. it. I mean, is, yeah. taking it down every year would probably They go up be. and down 12, and I don't see any signs down, so I guess maybe I'm worried for nothing. Yeah. Which, are there going to be lights on this? I wasn't planning on it, but it's an option. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about lighting it because we are clear closed when it's dark, so. Yeah. You know, oh, I don't think it's, yeah. No. We can, it's up to you, but well, if I could, maybe uh, when I, we do the parking lot, yeah, maybe over, I run a conduit just in case. You know, when we do the, the parking, parking lot, over, we can do yeah. it. Or solar lighting. Solar would be better. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah. And it would probably wouldn't last motion. all night, but it would design. last. I have a motion to approve the design. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the design. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Yes. No opposed. Okay. Drawing of for adopt an island program. So we're gonna go in order here, is that correct? Yeah, we only have two. We have two possible people. So we have the first island is uh, Woodland, West Boston Street. And that goes to Oh, is that you, John? No. I don't know. It looks like it. It says CV. It's, does it say CVS? Jane Hadley. Oh, Jane Hadley. They oh. right on the other corner. Oh, I saw Jane CBS, Hadley. so that's the highlight. <laughs> this is okay. Woodland Street. Woodland, uh, right? Yeah, what's been in the Street? Yeah. I'm like, what? Okay, next item is Island. Is so we had two people, so I guess yeah. they're going to get Church in West Boston Street. Uh, and that's going to Reservoir Garage. Uh, so and that's it. We have still have two islands left. Okay. And then we still have uh, Thomas and Crescent in Cement Island on Maple and Shrewsbury Street. Great. Um, next item is review VHB charges. I guess that, that is that in the agenda package tonight? Or? I don't they, have did the other members see that? I haven't received the charges. I know they were sent to you. I didn't receive them. Okay. okay. Yeah, so I'll, I guess since this, we'll put this on for the next meeting. I think Mr. Hadley also asked at the last meeting to, to discuss about having other people um, get, we get quotes for this project, for this work. Can we put that all on for the next meeting and talk about it? And I'll look for that um, item I got from the, from the ZBA, I mean from the planning board and I send it out. I'll send it to you and you can send it to the board. Okay. Uh, cemetery land acquisition, next steps, application to DCI. So, Mr. Chairman, um, you've all received a copy of the letter from DCR. This is the response that was sent to Mr. Gambasini. Um, we had applied on his behalf to determine <coughs> um, whether or not DCR had any jurisdiction over the land that is proposed being considered for um, development for cemetery. This land is off of Pier Street, um, out behind um, Maple. And the DCR letter um, basically didn't say that we could or could not use the property. All they responded to was to say that they do have jurisdiction um, because it's um, within two, zero to 200 feet of a tributary. It um, is also within 200 to 400 feet of a tributary, and it's bordering vegetated wetlands. So their response to our request for determination of applicability was just to announce to us what different provisions of law they feel they have jurisdiction under. Um, normally under a, a response from DCR, a community would have the ability to either appeal or then decide whether they want to go ahead and request a waiver uh, to do the work within the area. 
they really have given us nothing to appeal. I mean, they're basically just stating fact. So I met with John Scannell to try to decide what is the appropriate next step for the town to do. And he had said that if we wanted to um, move ahead with a formal request for a waiver to be allowed to do work, meaning develop roadways, et cetera, within the impacted area, that that would require that we do formal engineering plans. So what he suggested was that in the meantime, that um, we should file a letter to DCR asking for an inform informal advisory opinion as to what they might expect of us if we were to do the work um, on this property. He said that we should include some basic you know, layout plans um, and I've included in the back of the packet that you have in front of you some aerials and some other um, information that would identify to them where their areas of jurisdiction are and versus where the, um, the land is that we're planning to, to do the work. So I think what I'm, what I'm asking the board to do tonight is to authorize the cemetery board, myself and the chairman of the board of selectmen, to work to develop this letter requesting the informal advisory opinion and to get that submitted in as soon as possible. We'll then get some better information back from DCR in terms of what they think might be feasible to move ahead. Then the board can make a decision about whether you feel it's worth spending the money to do the necessary engineering to get a formal decision on a waiver to be allowed to do work within that area. So, oh, go ahead. wouldn't the uh, cemetery do the engineering plans? It wouldn't be the town doing it, wouldn't it? If they were, because who would pay for the engineering plans? I'm not sure that the cemetery department has adequate funds within their revolving fund to do the engineering work. Um, so it might require that there be an appropriation to do this at a future town meeting. So I read this and I said, this tell, tells me literally nothing. Right. Um, <laughs> zero to 200 feet from a tributary, two to 400 feet from a tributary. Is that if the whole parcel is that thing or are we talking, is it is the tributary 199 feet away and we can't dig on the first foot uh, I mean I do we know so if you if you um, I know that you don't have a colored version of this but you have a black and white version of this which shows Maple Street Pierce Street and it shows the area of frontage that the Gambasini parcel has on Maple Street where that small pond is mm -hmm. and then it shows the two areas of frontage off Pierce Street so basically what John Scannell was saying informally to me was that, you know, if we could find a way to avoid the orange area, which is half the, which is half of that, that front part that's at the intersection of Maple and Pierce, if we could find a way to avoid that and find a way to have the access into the cemetery, this, the public and, and um, operational access, avoid that orange area, um, that they would likely view that as being a nominal impact to to their watershed protection areas. The this would be the um, the zero to two hundred. This would be the to the four hundred. Um, and they felt John felt that that's something that would probably likely be approved because, as you know, this piece of property extends much further up, and the majority of the area that would be impacted for cemetery use would be that property that's further back. Where did you say the entrance? This is the area where, at the site visit, we had talked about that potentially being an entrance area. This is the existing entrance in by the maintenance garage that's there. And this is another piece, another entrance further down off Pierce Street. So we wouldn't be able to go off. Um, we would, I, he determined that it would be highly unlikely that they would ever allow permission to go off of Maple Street. Which makes it, to me, makes it a lot less attractive than. It absolutely yeah. is. There's yeah. a lot less land that we would. Well, there's, there's how many? How many acres is the whole lot? Twenty-two. Nineteen acres, right? There's twenty plus an additional. Twenty acres. What do you think that circle is? Does it? Did they give you any? I, I, I'm sure we could figure it out. I don't have that information. Yeah. This is well, the, I think the whole problem was the entrance. This so is not. You, you, you don't have an entrance anymore. Yeah, I like the entrance yeah, off that, the that, main that, road. That. So the entrance would now have to come off of Pierce Street, yeah. to stand, which would be. So can we major so, difference? So can we appeal that? That we uh, no. I mean, what what can we appeal? He says we can. Uh, He's suggesting that we seek an advisory opinion to determine if the if 
it is, I mean, he basically said we could ask for this, but they would likely tell us no, that there's too much impact. But that he suggests that if we feel that it would be workable to have access be from the two Pier Street frontage areas, that we should identify that, create a very basic plan that shows where the accesses would be and how it would lead up to this cemetery usable area. Um, and then ask them to determine if they feel that would be workable and whether it would be something that they would allow. Do we, have, do we have, on the other side of the, do we have any other access off a road no. besides Pass and Maple? No. It doesn't go around to the other side? Doesn't. No. It abuts the, um, the affordable yeah. housing, right. excuse me, the housing authority land off Maple Street, but. It doesn't come off of um, 140? No. So what is that would make a huge difference going to uh, Pier Street, the neighborhood over there. Yeah, I, mean, that would, I don't think. Chris, are you thinking the old fire road that off of 140 that connects to the dead end on Pier Street? No, I was thinking the, the doesn't this, this doesn't the uh, housing authority the housing, have, housing they have authority have, connects to, to 140. They have connections. Yes. Have this connections. land doesn't. No, it would have to go through that and then Correct. to this land. Correct. That would be a big entrance. Um, yeah, I, that would be a half mile. Can't have to after. ask, but I mean, I I think we should ask. Ask for the for the for the Maple Street entrance as well. We know what the answer is going to be, but we can at least ask. And they might have another idea. Did we come right out the letter that was sent? Was it very direct in asking what we were looking for? And they just decided to do it as a global and not answer the questions? The application was very direct, but what was not included were engineered plans for them to give firm response to. So I think we could uh, let them go ahead and we'll send a letter out to you, Wendell. No, get the, the um, what do we ask for? You said we have to ask for a? An informal advisory. Informal advice. So that's what we need to. And that would be sent to Patricia Curtis at DCR. And yeah. could we ask for that with an entrance off of Maple Street? We can ask them to comment on various different options. Yeah. So that's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, and we do that to the chair so we don't have to. Uh, I think this yeah. means, okay. I think that means a lot if we can't enter off. Right, I agree. Not only because it's in, I think it's just because it's a back side street. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a main road. Um, I don't think it's the best best thing. But I agree. I guess we'll have to get the, so do you want a motion that we sent that to your office? Yeah. Okay, so, so, we'll, so, so we'll make that motion. Second. Okay, a motion is second and um, any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. I need to get, I'm going to go get mine in a minute. Consider approving the hire of Jacob Casina as production assistant for WBPA TV as step one of grade two, 1366, an hour effective October 7th, 2018. I have a motion. In a second, um, something different we did uh, this time with the WPPA. He came in two or three times, kind of learned the equipment before we hired him. He saw what he needs to do and then kind of volunteered for a few a few weeks with us. So kind of helped us out. And then now we decided to um, hire this uh, young man to help us with taping the uh, TV shows. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Consider voting to accept the surrender of all alcohol, beverage, liquor license issued to Keepers, DBA, uh, Motel Grill and Spirits, 175 West Boylston Street. So moved. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, next is old business sewer rate review and adjustment. I'm just going to, when you get set up, I'm just going to run out and grab something in my box. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I don't need to use the, uh, the screen. Could, could we use just a screen the public thing can see? Because um, they won't be able to see it.
I want to find this first. Okay. Sorry, just a second. I want to find the um, the same thing that you have for a handout there. Okay. That I can put it on the. Uh, It'll be uh, just a minute. Look at that, like magic. Hmm. Didn't work last time, but it's certainly working It'll now. work it today. Is that the one you wanted? That's the slide you wanted? Yep. Yep. <coughs> All right. Hi, uh, everybody. My name is Mike Schrader. I'm with uh, Ty and Bond. And I'm trying to make this even a little bigger for people trying to look. Um, so last time I was here, we were talking about the mid-year FY18 uh, SOAR adjustment, or rate adjustment, I should say. And um, I'm back to just sort of refresh everybody on uh, where we are. Um, I looked at some numbers uh, preliminarily that I got relative to usage and revenue and expenses just to check in on the predictions that we made. And um, so I was really happy that the usage was within 0.09%, which means it was just very steady from last year, which sewer is more steady than, than water. Um, the, the total expenses were about within 1% of projection and um, revenue was a little low and the retained earnings are a little lower than we predicted. And honestly, I haven't, um, I haven't fully updated the, the model to reflect last year's data. Um, so when I, when I plugged in some numbers to reflect that, and I, there's a couple questions I need to ask and verify but um, it looks like you're still on track here and, and we're in a mode of um, you know funding by spending down retained earnings or reserves and then also doing rate increases um, and I didn't want to just show an alternate projection without really vetting um, the numbers but when I looked at it it looks like you know out in 23, 24, it might go too low. So there may be an adjustment in 21 or 22 different from what is shown, which I, I think is um, sort of par for the course. Um, so what I, I would recommend is you continue with the series of 8% increases as discussed and or as you know, previously predicted and let me, uh, I guess, spend a little more time with the numbers and the nitty gritty to, to just validate that better. And that's was sort of my intent going forward that every year after the fiscal closes, you can 
um, update your projections to just see how you're doing. You know, is it was it more than you thought? Was it less than you thought? Um, because that affects uh, the future rate increases. So I apologize for being a little out of sync with the um, with the accounting and the DPW on on that. Um, but I do have all the data now, and I can update this to you know give you a better insight um, either next time or I can you know just send it back around when it's done. What you have on the screen is different than what we have printed in front of us. We've got the we've got six eight percent consecutive. Yours pushes it out until looks like twenty seven. All right. Apologies. Well, either way, this is not updated, right? What we're looking Correct. Yeah, it's so. it's sort of verbally updated. So I guess do we want to look at this at a future meeting, or since we don't have updates? When will this be updated? When will you have? Um, it won't actually take me that long. I just I tried to do it when I was just sitting back there, and just some of the numbers were not. Um, the same, so I didn't want to uh, show them. Anita. One, two, three, sorry. four, five. I'm sorry, one second, Anita, you want to? Yeah, the, the original intent for tonight was to have Mike come back and just kind of give a brief overview in terms of where, where he sees us as, um, as to the predicted trends. So um, the, the intent was that tonight would be just the, the basic discussion and that we would be scheduling a public hearing regarding any rate changes for the November 7th meeting. Well, but would, but so that will be the that'll be the night we get the updated get the full detail and and go through a decision and he um, Mike at that point would be able to give you um, a, a screen like this that would show you um, if you went ahead and, and did the eight percent increase again um, you know where that would um, send us in terms of trend and whether he still feels at that time that we might need to make a, an adjustment higher than eight percent in the 2023. Frame. Yeah, this is the this is the you know the live model from the handout that you're looking at, um, and like I said, when I was just preliminary looking at the numbers, you're we're here in 19 now, and like I said, it was looking maybe a little low in 22, 23. Um, so I would just want to check. Ah, whoops. <laughs> um, I guess it does have a limit after all. So really, yeah, um, what Anita just said was to just come and refresh you and then at November uh, 7th would certainly be enough time to have a, a revised update. So when you say a little low, 22, 23, you mean low as in dipping too far into retained earnings yeah, and running yeah. out of cash? Correct, correct. And that's, you know, if you sort of look at it, um, when you're funding from a combination of rate increases and reserve spend down, which frankly is the, I think the best, this is the whole value of having a long range plan. Um, when you make a little change up front, it dips lower down in the, in the future. So um, at that point, say that was, Say that was validated, and I look at everything, and it says, "Yep, you're gonna you're gonna go lower than you want to in four years." You can you have a choice. You can say, "Well, we'll we'll do little tweaks now, or we'll wait, and then you know if it continues to validate that, then we'll make a larger jump." Then it's um, it's really, and that's the sort of the beauty of having some time is that you're not forced to make a drastic change and though the whole concept of this is you know I, I call it rate making on a continuum so it's not a one-shot deal it's not looking at it wasn't me was not looking at it in a um, in a vacuum year to year it's it's having an understanding of what's going to be happening in uh, in future years so have you plugged in the 20-year plan for the infiltration dollars 
that's that's a is or will be accounted for in the update? yeah it is and um you know so for example one of the other things to validate was you know did you spend the money this year did that change have you changed your approach you know really is there anything um you know anything that came up anything that that you know you didn't realize you needed to do or realize that you didn't need to do that would impact uh, future projections so that's um Oh, um, you know. yeah, so I don't, I'm not exactly sure why we're on tonight. I guess it says to review, uh, review and adjustments. So I guess we'll just wait till the November public hearing to, what? to, to look at the adjustments. Sorry. To look at the differences. So, so right now it looks like we have an 8% increase all the way to 2023. When you come back to us, could that change? Yeah, yeah, it so could, but not, but not. You're only setting rates a year at a time. I don't think it'll impact 19. So, if, if my opinion or my recommendation would be, go ahead, and schedule the rate hearing, um, and when we come, uh, well, first before that, if I think that that 19 is not going to work, which I'm pretty sure it is, then I would say something ahead of time. But otherwise, you come to the rate hearing. We talk about what's on the table, which be the FY19 rate, and then give you an updated forecast as to the rest of the projection period. Is that okay with the yeah, board? Yeah, it makes sense. That's, yeah, let's just then, um, Basically, this is just a warning that we're gonna go with eight. Next, when we do the rate here, and we're gonna stick with eight, but it might not be eight <laughs> all along. It might change in four years. Right, and yeah, so I apologize for being out of sync. Um, okay, do But you it's know? still a good, you know, chance to come in front of you and uh, do you, I need to do you have anything to add? No, not right now. Not till. No, I think just a reminder that um, last year at this time the board did make a decision that rather than go ahead with one large rate increase mm -hmm. at that time, that you preferred taking the multi-year smaller rate increase approach. And so that's why we're coming back to you with another hearing this year to look at what the FY19 rate adjustment would be. Um, it had been projected as being another 8% increase, and I think you just heard Mike say that it would likely still be an 8% increase. But the rate hearing will also give us a chance to show people updated data to see whether that 8% increase will likely hold for the next few years, or it will act as a warning to the board, to the public, that a higher than 8% increase might be needed at some point in the next few years. Did, did we get, I know we had a big discussion when we were talking about one big one or five small ones, did we get a, a bunch of complaints about the rates changing? No, we okay. did not. Because I know that was one of the concerns. It was a concern, and it didn't play out the way that um, had been worried. Good. Okay. And so the other thing to account for is the uh, implementation, and you guys have a fairly straightforward adjustment. So if you have like a really complicated rate structure, you know, it might be better to do it in bigger jumps, but it, it's pretty straightforward and. Uh, um, they didn't have any trouble implementing it. So that's another, uh, you know, sort of ease of use thing. Okay, any other questions right now? Yeah, that's that's fine. So we'll, if, if at the next meeting you can bring something that we can put on the screen. Yeah. So we'll, I mean, that worked pretty good, so we'll get it to set up if we need to bring another computer. Well, as long as you're here, I guess, because <laughs> when I pushed that button the last time, you. nothing happened. Yeah, so we'll just get it just so the public yeah. can see. No, I, and that's... That's what this is about, is communications and transparency, so. Okay, so we'll just put, uh, talk about it again on November 7th, correct? Okay, next item is the town administrator's reports. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, the first item is just um, update the board on two current issues that are underway. Um, the West Boston Housing Authority and the West Boston Affordable Housing Trust um, met several weeks ago and reached an agreement that they would work together to develop an RFP to seek proposals from developers for the development of approximately 60 units of housing on the back portion of that land owned by the Housing Authority off of Maple Street. And that would be done through a, a long-term ground lease. Um, this RFP would be used to establish a set of criteria um, that would be used to rank proposals received 
uh, with preferences being in terms of de developmental style, amenities, etc. cetera. Um, and obviously they have uh, quite a bit of work ahead with them to develop that RFP um, before it actually goes out and we start to receive proposals. But I wanted to make you aware of the fact that that agreement is now in place and I'll be sharing additional details with the board as they become available. I just say one thing on that. We, that's, we've been working on this at least three years, probably closer to four years, trying to get this. So it's not just something that just came up above. It's been a long, long road so far. And the other item is the um, employee compensation study. Um, the personnel board did um, finally voted, finalized and voted the revised grade schedule for the updated job descriptions at their last meeting. Uh, copies of that is, um, are in your boxes. Um, there was an information session held today with the employees just to help them understand the process that was taken. Um, and the um, personnel board is preparing for their presentation at town meeting to seek the necessary um, votes on the wage adjustment article under the personnel bylaw section and then also the wage adjustments under the budget fix article. Um, the personnel board's prepared to meet with any employees who feel that the job description or the grade or step assignment should be reconsidered. So um, I believe that they anticipate that they'll be meeting with a, you know, a number of different people over the next few weeks just to double check uh, the work that they had done. Okay, yes, uh, go ahead. Do you have an, uh, copy, an online copy? An online copy? Oh, oh, do you have a better copy? Because it's all cut out. Oh, on the okay. one uh, yeah, yeah, I will get you that. Yep. I don't know who's what. And the uh, question I have is who is the bot? Uh, who determines th these are the uh, actual facts? The personnel board, you, or the board of selectmen? Who is the uh, final line on that? The personnel board. Personnel by by bylaw? It is. Okay. Um, so, I don't know if I got this earlier, but I think this is the, we just had this in our box. Yep. This is the first time we've seen it, correct? Yes. Um, the only, the only concern I have is that it looks like only, it, it, it puts a little dot that three people have gone down, but it looks like only, um, two. There's a dot under select a municipal assistant, but that's, it looks like the grade goes the grade number goes up. So I don't know why that's listed as. The dot indicates that the person's working out of grade, meaning that they're, the wages that they're currently earning are in excess of what the grade would normally allow. Well, that's not, but that's not the case when you look at new grade compared to current grade. The grade goes from five to nine under one. But Wouldn't that be an increase? No, because what they're being currently being paid is above what, they, what the grade would have allowed. So you would need to know what their current rate of pay is. So the, the grade doesn't mean anything in that in that case. No, the what that what that dot that asterisk means me, is that that person has been working out of grade. Oh, and then it, I mean it looks like only. So once we once we vote this at town meeting, then then what? Then what happens next? We jump every, we make every, we make all the moves automatically? So the, what happens is that the um, people who would change the grades, that grade change designation would be on file in their personnel file and with the accountant's office. The, any wage changes associated with that would become effective October 28th. Did you put a dollar amount to what this would cost us? Their work, the personnel board is working on that with, working with accounting. So. So like the, like the first one, clerk, it says they're currently in grade three, their new grade is two. Mm -hmm. that's, not an, that's not a decrease? It's a change in grade, but it's not a decrease in pay. No one is going to be having a decrease in pay in this. So my, so my question is, so if someone was moved down from grade three to two, so. and then when, they, when would they get the next increase? When they now the next step, when would they get the next step? If it's a person who's currently maxed out on their grade mm -hmm. and they're changed to a lower grade, right. they would wait two years before they'd be eligible for their next step increase, because the personnel bylaws calls for a two-year change. They normally, if they're already maxed out, they would not be receiving any step increase. 
So if they are changed and they now are at a lower step within that grade that would allow them to actually get some step increases, they'd wait the two years before they'd be eligible for that step increase. And when they reach the... F and everyone else would be their normal anniversary date. And when they reach step five... Oh, You're I maxed out. That's it. Right. Right. And then you just get the cost of living. So for people who are currently maxed out, if they go to a lower step within that new grade, they actually have more opportunity for great, for pay increases than they would have had otherwise. So I just, okay. I just wish we had more, it's before the town meeting, which is in two weeks, so we could have, have more information about it for, to discuss it. I mean, to, to me, um, when they're gonna meet on it? What did you say? They were going to meet and uh, discuss the rates. You said they're fine. They're finalizing the rates with accounting. They they put together the schedule. The accounting has to double check it for them. So why don't we town meeting pass this article? So since we are we are seeing only today this uh, changes. So Can we do that. I think I don't know the answer to that, but I think John asked the question. So basically. We're going to get this. The personnel board's going to say, here it is. You have no say. This is what we say should happen. It's their role to set the wage schedules and to make recommendations in terms of grade assignments. So they're going to, they're going to uh, lower people's pay? No, they're not lowering people's pay. No one is receiving a pay reduction in this. Well, if you look at this, so where it says employees would take a loss with a stat. Those are people that are going to be working out of grade. If we force them to work at the grade, for example, Nancy, do you mind if I use you as, as an example? Go right ahead. Um, <laughs> Nancy currently has a contract. She is working, she's earning more than she would get if we were, if we stuck to the actual grade that she's assigned to. And there's several people that are in that situation. So, um, that's what we call working out of grade. And they would continue to work at their current rate of pay and get any COLA that gets assigned to the wage schedule would also be applied to their wage rate. So they would increase each year by the COLA um, as, as the grade schedule would. Well, okay, I'm, so I'm looking at, I'm not, not Nancy because she's not really in the, in the chat here. So I'm looking at, I'm not even sure what the first because it's cut us. I guess it's assessors, administrative assistant. They're currently in 4-4, um, which is 20-93, and they're going to 3-5, which is 20-86. So that's a decrease, and they don't get any more steps. So she's one of those individuals that would be working out of grade. She'll continue to get her rate of pay. And she'll still get the step? She would have, she would, she's maxed out. There would be no additional steps. So she'll get her rate of pay and she would get a new COLA applied to her annually moving forward. And that's the same case with... Um, I think there's three individuals and in three positions that are impacted that way. The library... Um, so you don't slip. Yeah, true. Sure. Yeah, I... Yeah. I'm confused. There are some people, though, just so the, the public knows, although nobody is going to take a decrease, there are people that are being moved down to a lower grade and maxed out on their steps. So while they're not taking a pay cut, they're actually gonna get a small increase. They're, just to use the first one on the list, it's a treasurer collector clerk, clerk is going from grade three, step three. So that means there were two more chances for advancement above the COLA for that position. Now it's gonna be moved to a grade two, step five. Small increase, the next step, but then there are no more step increases to that person. That person is maxed out in their position. So although it's not a pay cut presently, there are people that are going to, in the future, get less money than they otherwise would have without this compensation study. And that's based on the grade assignments which were done through the grading tool. I just have an issue with not getting enough information you know, uh, by town meeting. I mean, this is, they're gonna meet and two or three days time meetings in two weeks. Mr. Chairman. Yep. Um, I'm trying to follow the, the different grades as we're going through because I agree this is a lot 
and it's very important to the people, our employees. So, like the, the one that Chris was just using, grade two, step five, or somebody was talking about that, on the, the clerk. So, the new position, the new grade is two, and they are they qualify for five and they're currently at three? So, right now, they're, this is the current rates. They're at grade three, step three, 1785 an hour. Yeah. They're gonna move to grade two, two. step five, 1825 an hour. But and then they're maxed. Then they're maxed out. And some of these, if you look, Step nine, step nine five goes from 29.63 up to 30.11. Some of the grades and steps changed as well. Right, so what happens after step five if they've maxed out? out? That's it. You max out at five. We don't have additional steps. They'll just get their so do, do they nominally get their grade 2% three? COLA. Do they get, go, can they go to grade three or grade two is the, I'm talking about the number one. You can only change a grade if your job description and your position responsibilities dictate the oh, need change. Oh, change. Well, I guess. And we get no, no review of any of the job descriptions, or have I missed that? No, they don't go before the board of selectmen. Shouldn't they? So we have an idea. Of so, well, I'm wondering why. I'm wondering why, if we have no say in it, why anything comes in front of the board of selectmen. The only thing we get to do in this is fund it. Town meeting gets to approve the change in the funding. Right. We need to make sure there's money in the budget. And we don't have an amount, if we make all these changes, what it's going to cost. Based on what I saw as a draft for the wage adjustments needed, there's more than enough in that Article 10 wage adjustment that was voted at the Spring Town meeting. See, that first one, clerk, I don't even know what it's a clerk of because it's cut out. Do you know? Looks like treasure. I don't have the document treasure. with me. I think it's treasurer. Um, and this is all based on our our current bylaws. So it's been like this. This what what's being proposed is a change that the wage schedule within the current bylaw and the grade schedule within the current bylaw would change. And would, is this normal throughout towns that there is a personnel board that does this and then comes yes. so as Chris said we're basically just saying yeah here's the money I mean, we've never I mean this is a larger change than normal right but since I've been on the board it's never come before us to to opine on what the personnel board is doing mm -hmm. this happens to be a wholesale change in in everything to make us more in line with the surrounding communities but it, it, to me that it's no day I mean it took me a minute to figure out what all these numbers meant but it's it's no different than that when we vote on it, you know, every town meeting, the personnel board puts puts up a w new wage scale that we all vote on, and we don't opine on that when it's just the change of the scale. Now it happens to be the change of the positions as well. Right. Traditionally, the annual change reflects the addition of the COLA, that extra percentage that's added on each year. And the ones with the asterisks means they have come to the top of their grade, and they'll own, they'll get COLA and that, that's right. about it. Now, would that happen every year? Yes, they'd get every, the annual COLA, whether it's 2%, 2 percent, 2.5%, whatever it ends up being. Though that's not actually what the stars mean. The stars mean those three personnel are making more right. than what the grade and step should. We're not going to penalize anybody and lower their salary, but they're now maxed out in their positions and we'll just get the COLA. So it's, it's, as, it's as if they're a step five in their grade. And what that's the ones working mm -hmm. out of grade presently and they have no no way to go forward they have nothing mm. no step to take to go forward as do uh, you know anybody that's, that's been here for 10 years right. in the same position doesn't right. have any chances to go forward either right. so um so i'd go back i'm just looking at the town so i have this at town meeting is the personnel board going to present this? Because why would I present that? I, I know nothing about it. The personnel board is. is okay, because you gave it, it was given to me at the night we passed out who did what articles. To, to move the question. Yeah, so but, they should but move the they, question. They will be doing the presentation. You just say any questions can be answered by the personnel No, board. I think they. Usually I have some idea, but I really, we have no say in this. The personnel board should move this. Just like the 
the CPC moves theirs. We don't move it and then say any questions. The CPC, as the CPC. is different because the CPC. But there's has other. Been. But there's other. You know, there's other things that we do over the years that I think. And I, I don't have. I don't care one way or the other on who moves the article. But when we have the yearly COLA personnel board, the change, it gets moved. The personnel board says we recommend approval. I think there'll be more questions on this. I, I don't have any issue with the personnel board moving. I think the personnel board should move it, and they okay. they should ask questions. So we, so basically, if they lower it and higher it, sell it. We have, there's nothing we can do in regards to this. We just we need to recommend it. the town doesn't accept the article. So don't you think it's uh, it's you know I don't think so. It's clear for me. Don't you think it's premature to put it on the town town meeting and then. Uh, do the people know this? It affects a lot of people, a lot of employees in the town. The personnel board have have meetings, public meetings that people could come to that they were invited. People, employees or residents were invited to. They, the employees had not been specifically invited, but we did have. They did hold an employee info session today on this. Today. Yeah. And how was it received? There were two employees that um, were concerned and planned to meet with the personnel board to review it, because as, as I mentioned in the the, um, uh, the document that you have there, um, there is a, a, a an appeal process that's available to any employee. Mm -hmm. And what happens in that appeal process? It, as you know, if, if they say, well, you know, you're right, do they change the grade or something? How do they change the grade? The personnel board has the ability to change the grade mid-year if it's determined that it does need to be changed. They would go through the regrading process and you know make a determination, yes, what we had stands, or no, we should change this, and this would be the resulting grade. And does, does the personnel board, what else do they, besides this wage study, what else do they do? Um, if there's interpretation of the bylaw, they weigh in on the interpretation. Um, they, um, I mean, there's a variety of different things that they deal with, but most of it is dealing with interpretation and administration of the bylaw where there's questions. Okay, any other questions on this matter, I guess? Mr. Ruto? Yep. Um, maybe for a further agenda, I guess I would like to understand more of what that committee is, is doing. I don't know if maybe they could come before us or um, just to help share the knowledge and what is going on. So job descriptions and everything changed also, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you've all been made aware of this. We've been discussing this right. for quite a while. Right. No, I'm just asking. Yeah. Yes. All the, all the non-union job descriptions have been updated. That was necessary. That was a key part that had to right. be done before anything else could be. Yeah, I would, I would guess looking at this chat, there would only be a few people that had question because everybody else pretty much. Either has no change or. No change or goes up a little. Correct. So can I ask you one question to understand, for me to understand? Current grade is six. So that means uh, they are making uh, current grade is six, six and then the number next to then, it. Uh, six and then step four is making 2334. So the new grade is nine and the step two. So 2385. But they're getting they're getting more steps before more they steps, max. Uh, yeah. So they used to max at 2436. Now they're maxing at 3011. Yeah. So close to six dollars increase so in that case you know I don't think so even the grade is increased then the dollar amount is more or less 50 cents for the for next for next year since it's two year right every grade increase step increases every two year yes however the wage schedule gets adjusted annually by the cola okay Right, so that six four would go from twenty three thirty four to twenty four thirty six. Now it will go from twenty three eighty five to twenty five ninety six. So when I ask, you know, what it will cost us, not just for this year, what's it going to cost? What's this package going to cost over the next 
just, I mean, that's, that's in three years, that's $6 more an hour for just that one person. There are one or two people that obviously have been underrated for quite a while. Yeah. I think town clerk is one of those positions. Looking at this, if you exclude the start employees who are working out of grade, there are only two positions on the entire sheet that are going to be limited in the growth of their wage. They're going to get a raise now, but there's only two of them that have gone down a grade on the entirety of the sheet that, so that in the future they're going to be limited and make less than they would have. Everybody, so I don't, I can tell you the employees as a whole aren't going to complain. No. To, to, to Chris's point, I think an idea. We have, you know, this, it could, what, what is the cost of, if we could get, what is the cost of assuming no, no turnover in employees? If we can get a, a two and four year budget forecast to see what the real cost is going to be. So well, just we, from that one person, $6 more an hour, that's. That just happens to be the one that Roger was looking at. I don't. I did just picked it off the sheet. So, to me, we don't have enough information about this. We're so, meeting in two weeks. I, I, I can't. So, um, and also, you know, for a part-time administrative assistant, one is from the assessor's office and then a building inspector. How that one is three, uh, grade three and uh, step four, grade three step four. One is. Four four and three five. Same part time jobs and uh, with the different grades. No, but that's the thing, Raj. They're not, they're not the same t type of job. You have to look at the oh job description. The full job description and um, you know oh. the the rating criteria are very specific and very objective in terms of um, I think it's twelve different rating categories. So it really um, there's two parts to a job description. There are the key responsibilities and duties. And then there's um, key descriptors. So it's that not like administrative assistant means administrative assistant. It doesn't assistant. mean the same thing in each one because one could have um, a higher level of responsibility in terms of um, very time sensitive information and processing. And the other could have um, a higher grade because they are dealing with more confidential information. It really, it differs by position. And, and John, to your point, you're saying we don't have enough information. We're used to knowing everything about every article, mm -hmm. and a bunch of questions get asked at town meeting. This isn't our article. It's the, it's the planning board's article. No, it's no. the Person, oh, personnel, it's board's planning board. article. Yeah. personnel board's article. Oh. They, I, they're the ones that have to have all the information to answer all the questions at town meeting. The board of selectmen is not going to be answering questions on this. We're going to be citizens voting on this article that's sponsored by the personnel board. If you look at it that way, as long as the personnel board has all of the answers for town meeting, I would say we are ready to, to move forward with this. Just because we don't know all the nitty gritty details, it, it's not something that's, uh, it, while everything's under our purview, this is uh, it's not under our purview in, in the way most of the other articles are. Well, I've always said when we, when we get this, finally get this, we can talk about then, about if we make the moves and if we fund them. But you're saying that once they pass this out, we need to, find the money. The money's already been allocated by the this year. town meeting vote. For this year. I'm talking about, because I don't think this year is going to cost us much, but I just quickly, again, I just picked this up tonight. So, mm -hmm. I mean, what, so, you know, I think in the future it's going to cost, it's going to raise a lot in some of these cases. Now, administrative assistant, because they just talked about it, what's OH? It, it says. So I, Board of Health? It's probably BOH. So Board, that, Board that, of Health. So the Board of Health Administrative Assistant goes up when the, the other one is uh, Administrative Assistant Building? Building Inspector, yeah. Is that Building Inspector? I don't know. Yes. Yeah, before building, then building. Yes. That stays the same. And then Administrative Assistant Assessors seems to go down. Go down, yeah. So they're saying the Board of Health and the assessors are doing that. Those two people are doing different jobs, and they should be get paid differently. According to the grading. May I ask? Um, some of these don't have current grades, or they might have a new grade and not a new step. If I look at some of these, there are some empty. 
Plow drivers, there. peg coordinator. Veterans agent. Yes, um, some um, of those facilities. Like veterans agent is a stipend. Okay. So okay. Same as recreation director. Town accountant, it doesn't have a current step, but it's got a. Account is contract. So this would not apply to them. Right. So they shouldn't really be listed, but they're showing a new step and a new grade on here. I don't have it in front of me, I'm sorry. Yeah, why not? That's what I'm confused about. Like, you see at the bottom, everybody, if they don't, if it's not pertaining to them, then I would say either it shouldn't be on this list, or, and I'm not picking on the town accountant, but that's one here, that there's no current step, but there's a new grade and a new step and a current grade. So I don't know if it was a typo. And there are some things. So if you could find out. And then the whole bottom from the DP, I think it's DPW director, from there down, there is nothing on current grade, current step, or new step. It's just got a few new grades. Those are listed as grades 11 and 12. And in the wage rate, on the, back. the wage rate, it says all positions have contracts. So they just contract the positions. It's just a way to show So them. Okay, so this wouldn't impact no. those. Pat, I, you know, I agree with you that this is the personnel board's thing, but I think there's not enough information available at this time for, to bring to town meeting. So may I ask if we don't bring it to town meeting, does that mean the people lose out on their we have to wait until next town meeting. Well, it, have we we've already voted. So it's, it's it's going to town meeting. It's already been. It's on. It's, it's on, on the warrant. warrant. Right. I meant pass over. Right. If it's passed over or if it's not approved, then you know reconsideration or consideration would have to happen in the spring. Well, and when you when you told us that funding's all set for all of this, but now um, there's a lot of library positions. Mm -hmm. There's the, I know the and those cable all, access has some only a cup. I don't know. They've only picked and choose a couple positions that they um, they looked at. I don't think they looked at them all. So those groups, uh, there's increases. Are, are yeah, for, for for funding for the um, uh, cable access, so the production assistant and, and access coordinators, those would um, come from a different funding source. Those would have to be. Uh, funded within their own um, reserves for appropriation, what was appropriated at town meeting in their budget. But it's the town, the peg board is under the town, right? No? It is, but the peg board specifically oh, is funded through their reserves for appropriation, through the fees that are, are provided through charter. Charter. Okay, so, um, so our only option that we could all the articles, yeah. So the only way we would have to pass over it. So I don't know if. Um, Can you send us some updated information on the questions that we've been asking yeah. tonight? I don't know if everybody's copy is, but I've got something that says appended, Appendix D, and there's nothing there. So I don't know if there's other added information. It's blank. Um, there should. It's just a sheet, and the, the wage schedule is behind it, which is Appendix D. Oh, okay. I thought maybe there was more information on here that supposed to be. Okay. So I will send those questions along to the personnel board for you. And if you, I don't know if it would be the personnel board or Leslie that would give the um, budget projections for the future based on the steps. Yeah, I'll have to speak to, um, to accounting tomorrow to see if that's something that they can quickly just put into a formula. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to have that ready for the town meeting? I don't see any reason why that couldn't be ready for town meeting. That seems to me something easily done. Yeah. Guys, we're not meeting again except right before town meeting. Excuse me? We're not meeting again now until right before town meeting. This is, right. I mean, this is kind of like some of the things we talked about with the capital investment, getting this information when we can't talk about it. But To me, I, I think it's way too, too much information, too late. To explain to the public. Okay, should I move along? Okay. Under uh, new initiatives, um, the police department is looking to try to establish a trial program with town employees on a rape regression defense program or a RAD program. Um, they're looking to try to uh, reach out to female employees to participate in a trial program 
with hopes that um, if it's successful, it can be developed to offer to town residents in the future. So that will be interesting to watch. Um, we're trying to see um, who, which, which female employees uh, would be interested in participating in that. So I'll keep you abreast as to whether that actually pulls off or not. Under business news, we do have a new business venture opening up on 73 Sterling Street. Um, it is Next Level Up Academic and um, Coaching Center, and they're actually holding their ribbon cutting on October 25th. And then for other updates, um, we do have our certified free cash already. It's received a tad early this year. We're confirmed to be getting $731,036 in our general fund free cash. And uh, for the sewer enterprise, it's Eight hundred ninety-six thousand six eighty-seven. So we're pleased that um, the general fund free cash is coming up, roughly roughly twenty thousand dollars more than we had last year. So that's that's good news. Um, under the FY19 legal expenses to date, um, we've paid eight thousand eight hundred twenty-three dollars. That doesn't include that actually does include the most recent invoice that's being processed. And of that $8,823, $5,392 is directly related to the ZBA activity. Um, that, as you know, ZBA is working um, with the uh, Brassi case, and they're still working on mediation with the 40B um, project on North Main. And then just a reminder to the board that the MMA annual meeting um, is coming up on January 18th and 19th. Um, Nancy has information on that um, in the, the beacons, which um, I believe those have all been put in their boxes, so that if you're interested in attending, you can uh, take that information. And that's it for the Town Administrator's Report. Okay. Next item is concurrence on the appointment of Peter Beauvais as a special officer for detail work at a rate of $48 an hour for the period covering October 4, 2018 through June 30, 2019. So moved. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so under meetings and invitations, I forgot to look this one up, but... So the fire open house is 1021. Do we have any times or anything on that? Um, I can maybe find it, but do you have any more information or no? It's in the town meeting mailer, but I'm, I'm thinking that it, I thought it ran from 10 to 2. Um, but the information on that is in the town meeting mailer, which people will be getting shortly. Okay. Uh, October 15th at 6.30, special meeting of the Board of, uh, the board of Selectmen prior to the semi-annual town meeting in the uh, Middle High School cafeteria. October 15th at 7 p.m., we get the annual town meeting at the Middle High School Auditorium. Uh, if you could come out to that, we have, as we've been talking about, we have about, I don't know, 20 articles on that day. So if you could come to the meeting, 7 o'clock, October 15th at the... Uh, at the Mill High School. Um, and then we have additional extended early voting hours. Um, this is for the state election. Any more detail on that? No. Right. Um, so people should, if they're interested in um, taking advantage of the additional dates that um, the town clerk will be establishing for early voting, they can contact the um, town clerk's office or check on the website. They were looking to try to find some dates. Originally, we've been told that it would just be the normal operating hours of the town clerk's office, and they've announced that they will be doing some additional early voting hours. Okay. And then um, October 20th, a uh, free paper shredding event at the Regional um, Recycling Center. Again, no no times on that. I, I'm guessing it's their regular hours on the 20th. That must be a, a Saturday, I'm thinking. I don't know. It so, is. I don't have details on that. Yeah. I don't know. It's a Saturday. Okay. And then the other um, item we have is the... Cleanup. The town cleanup. We have that coming up um, on the 13th of... Um, oh, that's not it. <laughs> October 13th October from 9 13th. to noon, with the rain date being October 20th. Yeah, 
So if you know if people want to, I don't know if you're getting many more signups. We, we get a few more every week. So I'm really pleased with the turnout, the people who are volunteering on this. Okay, so it's uh, nine to noon. You can sign up for all different types of things. Um, there's a lot more information on the town's website. So if anybody's interested, they can um, go to the town website and sign up for different different activities on that day. Okay, future agenda items and Board of Selectment reports. Any reports or agenda items from anybody? No. The only thing is in regards to the, um, I had the hardest time finding the goals, at the town goals on the, um, the website. I don't know if they're on there. The Board of Selectmen goals? Yeah, I looked at Actually, those will be on the agenda on the October 17th meeting to finalize and provide updates, and we can post them at that point. So they're not, they're nothing on there yet? I don't believe they've been placed on the, on the website yet. Okay. Um, okay, I guess that's it. No other comments? Okay, I'll obtain a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No one. Thank you.